Which of these services do you think you will keep, uh, if any, when the pandemic is over? I think that we'll keep all of the, of the changes will continue in some iteration. But I think what does need to happen is each of the oncology farm services that have utilised these different services need to review what they put in place, evaluate the impact those changes have had on the patients, on the staffing and on the service overall, and then decide um, which of those services they will take forward. I think it is quite tailored towards individual trusts, which, which ones they'll continue. I know some of the London hospitals use the courier services and they're already trying to move back from that uh, and then look at home care instead. I think one of the biggest changes that we kind of saw was that it actually demonstrated that pharmacy services, particularly oncology pharmacy services, were able to make decisions and implement changes with pace, so long as we were given the autonomy to do so. So I'm really hoping that one of the changes in that we were given the flexibility and the use of innovation to be able to make these changes continue. So that's what I would hope is the autonomy to be able to continue making our own decisions with regards to our services. And what developments would you like to see in the future? to support further development of your pharmacy services? Particularly at Belindra and with, with links to the pharmacy education services, I think that we really need to work with the pharma industry, which has a role in moving some of its very good and very professional patient education material onto more of a virtual platform. We know they're providing very good patient information leaflets and patient diaries, but there is a lack of virtual. And as the patients aren't going to be physically coming to the hospital, we need to get that out there to patients, similarly to the way that we've taken up virtual consultations. And I think there's a way of us linking in and working with pharma to be able to tailor that education to patients and linking in with what the education we need to give from the cancer centre as well. So if the pharma industry had a flexible approach that allowed tailoring of, of, of those education to build in both the, the standard education around that drug and as well what we want to provide the information around the cancer services that we provide as well. What role do you think community pharmacy could play in oncology services? Well, with regards to community pharmacy, I'd like to see more of an integration between oncology services and community pharmacy. During the pandemic, community pharmacies were absolutely instrumental in being the face-to-face -face healthcare professional that patients were still able to access on an ad hoc basis. From a, we need to link as oncology services closer with them to be able to maximise on those touch points that they have with patients in order to make sure that patients are signposted correctly so that there's a earlier diagnosis, you know, prevention as well, where community pharmacies can play. You know, we know that cancer referrals went down during the pandemic because less patients were going to see their GPs and being picked up that way. So we need to see if we can use community pharmacy as a way of um, bridging that gap and filling that gap. So we just need to work closer with them really to enable that to happen.